Hi everyone, my name is Clarissa, I'm Complex Number on Twitter, and I'm here to talk to you today um, to share my thoughts about why, where and how you can use art to teach maths. So what is mathematical art? Um, here are some examples. This is a hyperbolic tessellation by Escher. This is created in Excel by Hamid Nadere Yagane, and it's made of um, trigonometric curves. This is by Tom Bedard and it's computer generated. This is laser cut. This is by George Hart. If you know Vi Hart, it's um, Vi Hart's dad. This is 3D printed. It's by um, Bathsheba Grossman. And this last one is just done with the, the equipment that your students will have in their pencil cases. It's just felt tip pens and a ruler for this one. And this is by a lovely artist called Regolo Bitsy. So um, what is it about this art that makes it mathematical? Well, um, there's a kind of regularity to it all. Um, it's all done by following rules or instructions or algorithms, which means that anyone can do it. You don't need to be good at art to create stuff like this. You just need to be careful and follow instructions. And there's geometry and symmetry. Um, there's tessellation, there's sequences and patterns. All of these mathematical ideas are in this artwork. So there's loads of maths to draw out. You might be thinking, well, kids aren't going to be able to do stuff like that. But I'll just show you some of my students' work now. So this is Curves of Pursuit, all drawn by children in my classroom. Absolutely gorgeous. This is Celtic Knotwork. These are impossible objects, so the Penrose Triangle um, and the Impossible Rectangle. These are mazes and labyrinths. Uh, these are epicycloids, the cardioid, the nephroid, and so on. Uh, these are paper folded polygons um, and then sort of tessellated and arranged with different sizes to make these glorious um, pictures. These are Islamic geometric patterns, great for exploring compass and ruler constructions and tessellation. And even a little bit of modern art maths. So um, this is all very beautiful, but why should we be doing activities like this in the classroom? So I'll talk you through sort of the four main reasons why I think these are really useful tasks in the classroom. One of the main reasons is skill development. Our students need to become comfortable and familiar and confident with their rulers, their compasses, their protractors, with measuring lines and so on and so forth. And mathematical art is a fantastic way of getting them to do that without really realising that they're just practising how to use a compass or how to measure lines. Curves of pursuit, hundreds of straight lines used, um, labyrinths, you need to draw lots of circular arcs. Um, impossible objects, you have to do triangle constructions, Islamic geometry, you have to construct perpendicular bisectors. And these are all skills that our students need, um, but they can practice them um, many times and in a really engaging way if you make mathematical art with them. A second key reason is using mathematical art tasks to consolidate key curriculum content. Um, for example, an Islamic geometry lesson Will um, you can work on things like symmetry, tessellation, um, classifying polygons, they're rich with angles laws, you can look at geometric proof. Epicycloids are fantastic for exploring relationships with circle geometry and looking at modular arithmetic and times tables. Parabolic curves, there's algebra, there's geometry, there's Pythagoras in those. And um, the golden ratio is fantastic. Um, you need to practice work with compasses in drawing something like the golden spiral. And of course, there's Fibonacci sequence to look at as well. And paper folding is fantastic for exploring 2D and 3D shape. So all across the curriculum, mathemat mathematical art can be used to consolidate that sort of content. And thirdly, a lot of these tasks have got lots of opportunities for problem solving. They can be introduced with questions or prompts that require students to visualise or to conjecture and generalise. There's opportunities for both geometric and algebraic proof. 
Um, and there's lots of creative decisions that need making on behalf of the students. They need to think about things like if they want their design to start in the centre of the page, well, they've got to figure out how to find the exact centre. They might want to have a design made of five overlapping circles, for example. They're going to need to know how big the radius of one circle must be so the whole thing fits on the page. They might have a design with six-fold symmetry and they might want to know how many different colours they can use to colour it in symmetrically. And the colouring in is a really important part. It's not just busy work. Students are thinking about symmetry and about enhancing tessellation. They're thinking mathematically as well as aesthetically when they finish their designs. And finally, mathematical art is a great way to engage students in their mathematics. You'll find yourself with lots of opportunities to praise even the most reluctant learners in your classroom. And you can build on these successes to strengthen the relationships you have with your students. And you'll be bringing patterns from across the world, from different cultures, into your classroom to really enrich students' mathematical learning. So that's why you should consider using mathematical art in the classroom. But what about where, whereabouts in the curriculum you should use it? Well, all over the place, really. Obviously, geometry and measures, um, drawing and measuring, 2D, 3D shapes, constructions and loci, angles, laws, circles, symmetry, transformations, tessellation, Pythagoras and trig, but also number and algebra. Um, square roots and thirds are inherent in a lot of paper folding, sequences, the Fibonacci sequence, multiples, factors and primes in epicycloids, forming and solving equations, functions and graphs, and proof as well. Um, you can draw a lot of proof out of many mathematical art tasks. And last of all, in ratio and proportion, um, scale diagrams, scale factors, fraction and decimal percentage conversions as well, and ideas of similarity and congruence. Okay, so we've seen why we should use it, there's loads of reasons, and you've seen that it can be used all over the place in the curriculum, um, but how do you go about using it if you've never done anything like this before? So a good place to look is my Artful Maths website, um, artfulmaths.com, and in the resources section, there's a lot of classroom display resources, but there's also the section on mathematical art lessons, and it's full of PowerPoints and printables and everything you would need to run them in your classroom. There's an origami section, which has um, links to some great um, activities to do in the classroom. There's a little puzzle games review page, which um, looks at creative puzzles on iPhone or iPad. And then there's a blog, which I update relatively regularly. I sort of do it in spurts, and that's full of seasonal activities. So ideas for Valentine's Day or making origami music murals or Christmas ideas, those sorts of things. Um, there are other great websites out there though, so these are four that are particularly good. Mathscraft NZ um, is, has got lots of really top quality printable resources for using in the classroom. Math Munch uh, used to be a mathematical newsletter for kids um, and it's no longer running but it's all archived there and there's a really good maths art section. MakingMathVisible.com is George Hart's website by Hart's dad, full of fantastic creative projects, very often using sort of a laser cutter and things like that. So great collaborative projects to do with the DT department. And then Mathagon.com is relatively new um, and it's just full of bright, creative, colourful mathematics. So definitely check all of this out. However, if you feel you need a bit more guidance before you get started, then I have written a teacher book which has got lesson plans, full lesson plans for six activities, um, including two new ones that aren't on the website. Um, and there's ideas for questions and prompts you might want to ask students um, and um, support and extension ideas. And it all comes with downloadable resources. There's also an activity book which you can use alongside the teacher book um, in the classroom or you can, um, or children can use it independently at home. So all the instructions are included in the book and grown-ups can use it too. Um, those are available from Tarquin or from Amazon. Um, so yeah, check them out if you're interested. Um, hopefully you are enthused and excited about using mathematical art. It's not just about colouring in, there's lots of maths involved. Um, thank you for listening. Bye.